very much and, and thank you very much for inviting me and I look forward to, to talking to you. Please do send some questions in the chat and we'll look at those at the end of the presentation. Um, and um, oh, we will take a few questions at the end as well. Sure, Tony. Thank you. Um, hopefully you can recognize in the slide a few um, creators or inventors. And something we will discuss is, are we really inventing anything new? Um, hopefully you'll recognize a few faces there. We have Tesla, uh, Marie Curie, uh, Raj Reddy, um, we've got Alfred Nobel. So again, you know, all of these people are attributed with coming out with um, amazing new ideas and new inventions, um, but are they actually new ideas or are they just adaptations of something old? So we'll, we'll look at that as we, as we move on. Um, just to let you know, um, all of my slides, um, if I don't have a, a link, uh, to the to the picture, I've actually taken them from freepick.com. So all copyrighted images goes to them. I always like to make sure I show you where the sources uh, come from. Um, this is just a very loose agenda of what we'll um, talk about, um, but um, I, I might have changed things on the way. So that don't don't believe everything you see in the agenda. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I come from the UK in a place called Nottingham. You may have seen a film or heard of a guy called Robin Hood. Um, and the Sheriff of Nottingham, and that's exactly where I come from. Um, and uh, I moved over to Australia um, in 2002, and I went to Sheffield University. Um, again, you may have heard about Sheffield. Um, there was a very famous movie um, about some male strippers, and most people have heard of Sheffield from that. I, I wasn't one of them, by the way, but it's always a career opportunity if the IT thing doesn't work out for me. <laughs> Um, I now live in Melbourne, Australia, and as, uh, as you may know, we, we've been in lockdown since March, um, which has been very frustrating, um, but um, we're getting through it now, and hopefully tomorrow we're going to hear some good news from our Premier um, about reducing the, uh, the restrictions. Um, in my career, I've worked for companies called Staffware, Tibco, Cofax, Software AG, HP, and a few others, and these are probably logos you've heard of, and I've been very privileged to work for these organizations, and they've allowed me to travel around the world, and I've, I've spent many years working in and out of India, um, and, and really enjoy visiting uh, India as a country, and uh, I hope to visit again uh, uh, very soon once, uh, once travel is, uh, is, is, is back to some sort of normality. So um, just before we start, I'd like to introduce you to my great grandfather. So his name was Thomas Henry Barton, um, and he was around sort of um, till he died just after the, the, the Second World War. Um, and he got the order of the British Empire because he came up with these amazing ideas for the community. But some of his ideas weren't that good. He didn't really think through things very well. One of his inventions or one of his creations was to use gas instead of diesel uh, in cars and buses. He, he actually ran a bus company in Nottingham. Um, and uh, so he put gas balloons on top of the cars and buses during the war to save petrol and diesel, which would then go to, um, go to the front. Unfortunately, whenever there was a bombing raid and hot metal hit one of these gas, bomb, uh, gas bottles, you can imagine what happened. So this idea, while it was good and saved petrol, he hadn't quite thought it through for the environment he was in. He came up with another idea in the UK around that time, most houses had an outside toilet. So you had to leave your house, walk down the garden and go into this little shed where your toilet would be. And he had a great idea for preserving water. So he put on a lot of houses uh, in his area, uh, he gave them all free metal tanks to put on their roof. But on the very first rainstorm that they had, unfortunately, the weight of the metal tank and the water crushed the toilets and they were just end, ended up being a pile of rubble. So again, he did come out with some really good ideas, but hadn't really thought, thought through the, the, the full term. <clears throat> Great ideas, just not well thought through. So, you know, always have your eye on the bigger picture and the consequences of what your, what your invention or creation is going to do. But don't let, that, don't let it stop you from inventing or creating. So let's have a look at some elements for ideation. The ingredients for success. First of all, try and find something you're passionate about. Your job might be coding or IT, 
but there may be other things within your life or within your um, environment that you are more passionate about. It might be football, it might be cricket, uh, it might be philosophy, it might be religion, whatever it is. Try and find out what your passion is. And then try and build knowledge about that, that subject. Read, investigate, talk to other people, really understand what that knowledge and, um, and, and, and that subject uh, is about. And I guess as well as an inventor or as a creator or an ideation person, you need to be able to enjoy problem solving. So when you see a problem, do you think about, you know, if that was my problem, this is how I would, uh, how I'd fix it. There's also another um, aspect to, to creativity and that's your driver. What's driving you to want to create and invent? For some people it's fortune and glory and good luck with that but um, that may not be a very good driver or a very good motivator. It might just be for fun. Could be for inner fulfillment or making money. It might be just releasing your creativity or pushing yourself to a new level, or it might just be the pursuit of learning. So again, try and find a driver that's true to yourself. And we'll talk about core values a little bit later as well, which, which really help drive your, your ingenuity. Let's have a little chat about adaption versus invention, because I think this is really important. People always say, I've invented something new. Well, maybe you haven't invented something, you've just adapted something that made it better or made it or repurposed it for a different thing. Now, I would say a real invention was the wheel. Before the wheel, there wasn't really anything to compare it with. So creating the stone wheel, I guess, might be the, the first sort of true invention. But I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, hang on a minute, maybe they were rolling things on, on tree trunks. And so really the wheel might have just been an adaption of a tree log or tree logs that were being used to move things. If you look through time, the wheel has changed a lot over the years, but actually they're not new inventions, they're just adaptations of something else. We've taken somebody's idea and we've improved it, we've repurposed it, uh, for, 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 a new, uh, for a new reason. Let's take the invention of the helicopter, for example. The first working practical helicopter was 1939. <clears throat> and if we look at the evolution of the helicopter, you'll see that we can take it all the way back to 1100 with the Chinese flying top. But even that you might say, well, hang on a minute, was that really an invention? Or was it just an adaptation of the sycamore uh, seed? Again, we've taken something uh, which exists in nature that already was there, we've adapted it, we've repurposed it, we've taken an idea from one place and we've kind of relocated it into a different environment to solve a different problem. So when you're looking at idea creation and where can I get ideas from in order to pursue my, my creativity, have a look at adapting something that's existing, something in the world uh, that's existing today. Take ideas from nature. Some of you may know the Dyson vacuum cleaner. Dyson had this great idea where he actually used the, the concepts of a wind vortex to create suction for a vacuum cleaner, which was a very different way of doing vacuum cleaner building than anyone else has done before. He's taken an idea that exists in na nature and turned it into something practical. Obviously, read and read and read. It's very important that you, um, that you gain as much knowledge about your, your, your um, subject areas as possible. And then brainstorm, talk to other people, whiteboard things out, draw things on napkins when you're at dinner. As soon as you have an idea, capture it somehow. Have a notepad application on your mobile phone, carry a notepad and pen. <clears throat> we'll talk about the Disney ideation idea and also something called chunk maps uh, in, in, a, in a moment, but there are actual methodologies to help you become creative and, 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 and discuss different um, ideas. Do some random web surfing. Um, in fact, I think Google still has their random um, generator where you can just simply say, give me a random subject and Google will give you something. And maybe you use that as the start point of your new idea or creation. Also, all of these are very busy. They're using the front of our, our brains, our, our main brain. Sometimes meditation, going somewhere quiet, going for a walk, doing something different can actually help your brain become more, um, more creative. 
And in fact, if we try and force ourselves to be creative, that often has the, uh, the exact opposite effect and we get a brain freeze and, and we can't think of anything. Sometimes doing something totally different, doing a jigsaw, listening to music, going for a walk, that can actually help us and inspire us and help our brains quieten down to come up with creative ideas. And uh, a little known fact, or, or may, 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 maybe you, you all know this, but actually walking into a different room through a doorway actually resets the brain. Have you, um, you've probably heard stories where people say, you know, I, 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 I walked into this room knowing I was going to get something. And when I walked into the room, I'd totally forgotten what it was I went to go, get, uh, go in there for. And they've, there's actually been studies on this and they believe the reason that your brain resets when you walk through a doorway is because millions of years of evolution has, has created this, this, um, this mechanism in our brain. So when we were living in caves, when you're inside your cave, you're safe and your brain relaxes and it's in your home environment and, and your brain is thinking in a different way. You don't have to worry about the outside life. You're inside, you've got your food, your family, your friends, everything's safe. As soon as you pass through that cave entrance to the outside, your brain's in a different mode. It's getting ready to see if there's something gonna kill you, you know, an enemy tribe, an animal, um, you know, nature, uh, living in Australia, pretty much everything that you come across in Australia is gonna kill you. So, I mean, I know what it's like um, when you go outside your house, snakes, spiders, sharks, everything. So, so they believe that over, um, over time, your brain has this concept, when you walk through a doorway, your brain's resetting, it's getting geared up to, to, to cope with a different environment. And you can use that to positive effect. And by walking through doorways, resetting your brain can often trigger ideas for creativity. So the Disney method, what is the Disney method? This was developed by a gentleman called Robert Diltz. And basically what it says is, um, you have to kind of um, force yourself to pretend you know nothing about your problem area. And step one is, you pretend to be an outsider. And so you approach the problem as though you know nothing. And you write some ideas down. You then approach the problem as a dreamer and you go, you know what, there is no restriction to what I can come up with. And so you might, you know, start talking about going to space or walking on Mars as part of your problem solving. It's totally, uh, it's unrealistic, but it's obviously tied to the idea. You then put another um, thought pattern in called the realists. You take all of these crazy ideas that you've mixed up on your whiteboard or your paper or, or, or wherever, and then you start being more realistic. And then you start doing that repurposing. So if you're looking at travel and you go, well, if I wanted to travel, say from between um, Delhi and New York, the fastest, I might want to take the, um, the Apollo 7 because that's a pretty fast spaceship. It will get me there in seconds, right? But it's not very realistic. So what can we do in terms of the technology and repurpose the technology of a, of a rocket ship? And can we make it more repurposed and um, realistic um, for, for, for travel on, uh, on planet Earth? And so the idea is about uh, taking those realistic ideas and then finally being very critical about those ideas. And you sort of home in from these crazy ideas all the way to a few possible ideas that actually might, might go somewhere. And it's those few final ideas after you've criticized your own work that you would then go with. So the Disney method is used quite a lot of the time to initially kick off um, some, some basic creativity. Now, creativity and, and wacky ideas, uh, believe it or not, there's quite a lot of wacky ideas out there. So these inventions were, were quite interesting. So little umbrellas for your shoes to stop your shoes getting wet. There's a fan to cool down your noodles if you've got hot noodles. I really like the toast, uh, the butter spreader here. It's a little lipstick holder full of butter that you can spread on your toast. Much better than trying to use a knife. We've got Wellington boots, but they've got a nice open toes to, uh, to keep your feet cool. Um, if you don't like eating in front of people, there's a nice little nose blind uh, to hide your mouth while you're eating. Uh, this was a very famous uh, meme a while ago for privacy with your computer. You might, uh, you know, if you're a very emotional person, you could have a little toilet roll holder on your ears. Um, so you've got instant access to, uh, to tissue paper. For those of you who are very trendy and, and like fashion, you might want to have a removable turtleneck on your jumper. 
a little warmer for your apples. Something to keep your croutons crispy while you're eating soup. For those of you who like French food, there's a baguette holder. So you don't have to carry your baguette in your hands. You can just simply put it in your, in your shoulder holder. If you like reading, but your arms get tired holding the book, why not just get some stick on arms? So as you can see, lots of crazy ideas, which in principle are just stupid. But actually, when you take these, they may trigger other ideas that are more realistic. And so it's by taking the crazy ideas and homing them down and going, actually, I could take that principal idea and use it to make something realistic. Now, another um, method um, that uh, you might find interesting um, is called chunk maps. And chunk maps is a way of taking a subject and playing with it into different levels of understanding. So for example, there's, a, a, there's an example here. Now, I don't know whether you've seen a, a show called Border Security. I don't know if you have it in India. You may have your own version. Um, but in Australia, um, in border security, one of the most dangerous things you can bring into this country, apart from um, explosives, are bananas. If you bring a fresh banana into Australia through customs, um, you're in some really big trouble. But why is this? Well, let's explore it using chunk maps. So some foods in Australia are prohibited items. So prohibited items I've chunked down into more detail and said some prohibited items come under the heading of food. If I chunk up, I go from food to prohibited item. So let's chunk up a little bit more. So a food is a prohibited item and we have prohibited items because of government policy. And if I chunk up again, that government policy is there to protect the environment. Uh, the environment. So you can see how chunking up allows me to become more abstract and encompass more um, open ideas about what this is all about. Now, just as I've chunked up, I can also chunk down. So I become more detailed. If I have food, well, what kind of food? Well, fresh fruit, for example. Well, let's chunk down even further. What sort of fresh fruit? Well, bananas are an example of fresh food, uh, fresh fruit, which is a food, which is a prohibited item, which is prohibited through government policy to protect the environment. And if we chunk down even further and get even more detailed, a Cavendish is a specific type of banana. So you can see how chunking up and chunking down actually starts um, firing off different ideas because now you go, well, hang on, if bananas are, uh, are banned, what other fresh fruit is banned? And is it just food? You know, it could be guns, it could be explosives, it could be drugs. What are the prohibited items? Is it just government policy? And so suddenly by chunking up and chunking down, your brain is starting to think in a bigger or more detailed way, depending whether you're going up and down. So chunk maps is a really cool way just to thrash out your ideas and see where they're going. So some homework that you might want to do is to say, OK, here's an example for, for food and um, uh, border security. What happens if I took machine learning? If I have a machine learning model for, say, um, sentiment analysis, what happens if I chunk up and chunk down with sentiment analysis or, or machine learning? So again, we'll, we'll, we'll explore this a little bit further, but um, chunking up, chunking down allows you to go abstract and detailed, which again helps you with creativity. Um, and another uh, really cool subject is design thinking. And if, if you do anything, please try and go onto LinkedIn and do one of their learning courses on design thinking or, or find a design thinking course. There's lots of free courses out there as well as the, the paid ones. Um, it's a really good subject and I'm really gonna just high levelly touch it um, right now. But design thinking is a, an iter iterative process. It's not prescriptive. You can do the, um, you, you can do the, um, the, the activities in any order that we'll see in a moment. But what we're trying to do is understand the user, and, and that's critical, that's, that's really, really at the heart of things, the, the user experience. We then challenge traditional thinking and assumptions about a particular area or idea. And we redefine the problems, and then we look at alternative strategies and solutions. And so the activities that go into that are, first of all, empathize with your users, become them, 
Put yourself in their place and experience the problem from their perspective. And then define the needs that you've discovered with not only their problems that they've probably come to you with, but also your own insights when you became them and experienced the problems for yourself. Now start challenging the traditional ways of solving that problem. What's out there to help them today and challenge and create and become innovative about what else we can do to help that situation. Of course, we want to take those ideas and start prototyping. And we'll talk about prototyping a little bit later, but the idea is to actually start doing little different ideas and put them into practice, test them out. And that testing is really important. And of course, you can then, as you test other, as you test these ideas, other ideas come to mind. And so they, they become prototypes. And then you might think of other problems as you come across. And so doing these activities in no particular order will start generating ideas and creativity. So design thinking is, is something that um, I, I really encourage all of you um, to, um, to look into in more detail and, and do try and find uh, an online course if you can to, uh, to, to cover it. <clears throat> and finally, things are complex. There's, there's, there's no, there's no um, going away from that. Um, life is becoming complex. When I had my first car, um, it was a four cylinder engine. Uh, it took petrol and it had a spark plug, a battery, um, and that was about it. It was really easy to fix. I could open up the bonnet, I could get my spanners out or, 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 or my screwdrivers and whatever went wrong, I could usually fix it. And I didn't have to go on a training course. You could kind of work it out, right? You have a look at a car engine today and you need a computer degree just to open the, 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 the doors. It's, it's become very, very complex. And, and the, unfortunately, as, as IT and computers tell us they're making our lives easier, there's actually a lot of complexity behind making our lives easier. So do try and break down complex problems. Um, how did the caveman eat a mammoth? One bite at a time. So break down this complex um, um, problem, or even the solution might be very complex to build. Don't get uh, afraid of it. You know, we're talking about machine learning, AI, uh, Python. You know, all of these can be broken down into smaller and smaller elements and just concentrate on that one thing. And when you've got that one thing going, go to the next thing and the next thing. And before you know it, you've actually built a complex system. And I'll show you one of my, um, uh, one of my, um, uh, videos a little bit later on um, where, where I put together a little drone and and um, some uh, object recognition. Again, there was a lot hanging together, but each of the elements that go into it were actually quite straightforward. And it was really just joining them together and testing them. Um, that was the complex bit. And actually, the, the complexity wasn't that bad once I've broken it down into manageable pieces. And then, of course, we want to actually make it live. There's no good having an idea on a piece of paper or in our heads because an idea basically is, 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 is just stays a dream, right? And we, we're not here just to have dreams. We're here to build things and, and turn them into reality and, and become useful. So how do we do that? How do we turn that idea into something real? Well, the first thing is to actually visualize your goal, visualize the end product, and what would the future be with that thing working? It could be you've impressed all your friends. It could be you've done a really good job at work for a customer. Um, it could be you get an award. Um, it could be that um, you know it progresses your career. Whatever it is, always look to the future and go, while I'm working on this and it's giving me a headache, the future um, is, is looking pretty good and I, and I really want to get to that future point. And so that is your goal. Also, don't make excuses or procrastinate. Um, there is a lot of free stuff out there. For example, you know, UiPath community version is free. There's no reason why you can't get involved in RPA. And, um, you know, we've already discussed um, Academy today. Um, you know, there's lots of open source software out there. There's lots of Python projects um, already out there. There's lots of machine learning modules and um, tutorials out there. So really there are no barriers um, except just getting on with it, yeah? And finding the time. 
and that's the next thing. Set aside some regular time, try and get into a routine. And I know that's very difficult for some people, especially with, you know, with, with, with work being unpredictable, with COVID being unpredictable, et cetera. But try and get into a bit of a mojo, you know, for, for, for you know, it might be every Saturday morning, you're getting up at six in the morning instead of eight. Uh, and you're spending two hours just just um, on ideation or creating something, or you're having a half an hour at lunchtime um, as, as as often as possible just to spend on, on self-learning or, or creativity. So set some time again and try and get regular, try and get a routine, because that will really help your brain get into gear quicker each time you, each time you start that uh, thinking activity. Don't compare yourself to others. Um, you know, it's very easy to say, well, you know, I'm not Tesla, I'm not Albert Einstein. Well, no, you're you and you'll have your limits and you'll have your strengths just as they did. Um, and you may do something more spectacular than them. You may not achieve more than them. It doesn't matter. Just be yourself and enjoy what you're doing. Um, don't be discouraged by small setbacks. You will get plenty of them. Um, and you will come across some problems that might take hours and hours to fix, um, but don't, don't worry. Um, you know, use your community. We've already talked about the forum. You've got a problem, 99 times out of 100, that problem would have been solved by somebody else or a similar problem would have been solved and there'll be a workaround and a description of how they solved it. You know, use your community wisely. Also pace yourself. You know, fun turns into stress if you don't set realistic goals. Don't expect to build, you know, a Python model in an hour. You know, it could take you two or three weeks, possibly. Who knows? So, so set yourself realistic goals. Allow yourself enough time to enjoy what you're doing. Use the word yet to yourself as well. Whenever you're telling yourself, oh, I haven't got it, I haven't cracked it, you don't stop there. You say, I haven't cracked it yet. I'm not there yet. Give yourself and your brain and tell your brain you are going to get it next time. You're going to give it another go. And you're not there yet, but you will achieve what it is you want to do, whether it's a small problem or a big problem. You will find a thousand ways on how not to do something, and that's okay. That's actually called learning, okay? It's not, it's not called failure. So, you know, obviously, if you do the same thing a thousand times, you're going to get the same answer. And that's that's obviously madness. So make sure that when you are doing something over and over, you're changing it slightly to try and get different results. Um, but, um, you know, we're there to learn and we will learn a lot from our mistakes. In fact, you learn more, I guess, from from making mistakes and and uh, fixing them than you do just reading a book with the correct answer. And your original idea may change as you're building it. And that's OK. Don't don't worry about deviating it or going, ah, oh, you know what? I've just had this other idea where I can go off in another direction. Obviously, don't go in too many directions. Otherwise, you'll never reach your destination. OK, um, always have that goal in sight, as, as we said right at the top. You know, you've got your goal, but it's OK to deviate a little bit on 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 route. So so don't uh, don't uh, beat yourself up if your original idea uh, becomes something a little bit different. And then always look for the minimum viable project, the MVP, OK, um, or product. Uh, and uh, basically, that's going to know when do I stop? How how much do I tweak it and make it better? And then I'm going to say I've finished. OK, so for me, I'm not interested in a very polished product. OK, my my uh, way of doing things is to bolt things together as quickly as possible to show a concept. And then that's it. I stop. I'm not clever enough. I'm not uh, a clever enough developer to take something to production level. But I don't mind putting something, an idea together, putting it into a working um, proof of concept um, and then passing it to somebody else who might want to go with it um, and take it to the next level. Um, so just know in yourself when to stop and go, OK, I've achieved what I wanted to achieve. Now it's time to either stop or pass it on to somebody else um, or, or to do or, or to do whatever the next uh, the next phase is. Um, so, again, you know, set yourself real, be, be realistic and set yourself realistic goals. OK, so with all of that in mind, um, what we, we need to go back to our drivers, because there's no good forcing yourself to to do things that you don't like. If you do that you're going to get um, very frustrated and you're not going to be very happy um, and it, it just causes stress and anxiety. And so one of the things I'd like to just discuss now um, is, is how do I choose your, how do I choose my values? What are the drivers? We go back to these drivers. What's driving me to do what I want to do? 
Um, and one thing you can do, and, and this is by no means a, um, a, a full list, it's just um, 50 uh, values that I, that I found on, on the net. Um, and what you can do is say, well, I'm gonna choose my top five core values. These are the things that I know um, that, that, that are me today. Now your values will change over time. So when you're a teenager, family may not be a major thing on your mind. Travel might be the major value in your life. But when you're 30 and you're married, you might go, well, actually family is a, a core value of mine. So don't worry if your values change, but be true. Actually think about what your values are today um, and then and just, just list them out. So I, I was thinking, what are my top, uh, what are my top five um, values? Well, maybe um, achieving something is, is good. I, I like achievement and, and being able to say I've, 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 got, I've got there. Um, a challenge, I, you know, I'd like to challenge myself and push myself um, a little bit in, in, in some of the things I do. Um, I like being creative. I'm not artistic. I can't paint or draw. Um, I'm, I'm not a singer or, or a musician. So um, I, I get my creativity from, from building RPA projects and, and, and bits of electronics. Um, and, and also humor is quite important because, um, you know, one way of coping with stress and, and, and anxiety and when things go wrong, you know, um, apply humor to it is, is my philosophy. Uh, and I also like learning. So if I use these as my five core goals, these are my drivers for doing what I'm doing. And as long as I'm achieving these in the things I'm doing for my ideation and, 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 and projects, then I'm having fun. OK, and, and that's important, you know, keeping the fun and, and, and the, um, the excitement in, in what you're doing. So be true to yourself and, and you know, find out what your four uh, or five core values are and try and make your creativity, your projects um, align with those um, core values. Now, it's all very well having values, but what about passions? So, so you've, got your you've got your drivers, but what, what's your passion? What makes you get up in the morning and, and want to do what you do? Well, no matter how hard you try, you can't figure out what your passion is just by thinking, okay? It's, it's about what you do as well. It's about thinking and doing and bringing those two together, um, uh, which make uh, it exciting. It uh, sort of releases those endorphins uh, within your body. So if you don't know what your passions are, well, what you could do is make a list of the things you like doing versus a list of the things you don't like doing. So you may like coding in Python, but you really dislike, um, I don't know, coding in C++ or, or, or whatever it might be. Um, you really like um, uh, doing software design. You really don't like doing hardware stuff with a soldering iron and resistors and um, integrated circuits. Uh, you may really like um, working late at night, but you hate early mornings. All of these things, list them out, what you do like and what you don't like. And then you can come up with a sort of way of saying, well, actually, I'm passionate about this and I like doing it in this sort of environment. Again, you know, just have a look at your book collection or your CDs um, or the magazines you read. Have a look at your credit card statement. What are you spending your money on? Are there any themes? And you suddenly look and you go, well, actually, you know what? Over the last couple of years, I've been really interested in, um, I don't know, cars. And so self-driving cars, as we discussed earlier, might be your thing. And it might be something that you're actually quite interested in. It might be sport or cricket, um, you know, whatever it is. Um, just find out what it is and try and bring your creativity and your 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 um, um, design ability in that sort of area, because by doing it in an area that you're passionate about, you're going to be more motivated. <clears throat> um, so, again, you know, what is it you're trying to do? What is it you normally talk about with your friends or at work? Um, what do you like reading about? Um, and then number four, of course, is, you know, stop talking about all of this and actually get on and do something. Yeah. And that's the other thing, you know, again, don't just keep it an idea in your head, actually start putting all of this into, uh, in, in, into action. And make sure your passion aligns with your values. Okay, just a few little pointers here. Um, invention is often adaption as we've seen. Do we really invent anything new? No, we probably adapt something that already exists or exists in nature, etc. Um, if you have adapted something, please give credit to the people before you. What I try and do, and I, I, I'm sure I, I don't get this right all the time, but if I have built something, I try and say where I got the source bits from. Um, and it, it just helps um, people, you know, um, give, give them respect. And also it's respecting yourself as well 
um, and, and showing people that you've taken other people's ideas and that you're not only um, making them look good, you're making yourself look good as well. Don't worry, two or three people would have the same idea. So you may find that you think you've got this really original um, creation and then somebody down the road or, or online has either done it before you or they're doing something similar. Don't sweat it, it happens. You know, there's millions of people on this planet and they'll probably come up with a similar idea to you. Again, just be true to yourself, stick your head down, get on with what it is you want to do um, and, and just enjoy what you're doing. Please remember that your idea may inspire somebody else. Okay, so don't hide your ideas away. Just, just, you know, just show people what it is. Here it is. And if it inspires somebody, that's great. And if they get, you know, they might say, oh, that's a really bad design, man. But it might give them an idea how they can improve it. Um, now, that might not give you any credit. But hey, you would be responsible for something much better. And we'll have a look at an, an example of that uh, in, a, in a moment. And again, an idea stays a dream unless it's put into action. So again, you know, we can talk about things in forums like this, but until you actually get up and, and start doing something, then it's just a dream. And, um, you know, the world doesn't advance just on dreams alone. Don't dismiss your ideas too quickly. So here's a nice, uh, here's a nice example. Um, in 1894, Thomas Edison and William Dixon um, uh, exhibited their uh, uh, kinetoscope. And basically what it was, was a moving picture show that you look down this little viewer and you moved a handle and you could see movement, so a little animation um, uh, here. And um, that was great. This was the entertainment of the day. So you would have hundreds of these all lined up with different little clips and animations and people would move from one booth to the other to see a story or, or, or to see some uh, to see a, a, a movie. But it was a one to one relationship. So these two brothers called the Luminaire brothers saw this box and they took it a step further. They took the existing idea and they moved it. They created something where you could show a moving picture to an audience, a group of people. But interestingly enough, and this is really key here, uh, Louis basically said cinema is an invention without a future. He thought his idea was a rubbish. He thought it was, well, not rubbish, but he thought it wasn't going to go anywhere. It was a nice little project, but <laughs> it's not going to take off. Who, who on earth would want to go to the movies and, 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 and watch something um, like that. But of course, we know that the movies became the biggest uh, money uh, making uh, um, activity uh, for, for, for many years. And in 1895, that was the first screening. It only took them a year or so, look, to go from this basic concept uh, to something new, to be repurpose something to be much, much better. And it became a, a phenomenon. So again, you know, your simple ideas that you think might be just a simple idea could be the inspiration for something much bigger. So where does that all take us? Well, here we are at UiPath. And what do UiPath do? Well, they make robots so people don't have to be robots. Um, and first of all, let's be realistic, okay? So when it comes to RPA and the little projects that I put together on the side, um, you know, I need to put things in context, right? Um, RPA is a business productivity tool, basically. That's, that's its reason in being, uh, or originally was there. And businesses pay for UiPath robots, right? And UiPath pays my salary. So 99% of the time I am working on building robots or RPA solutions for businesses because that's how UiPath remunerate me because they make money from that design and they give me money for, for doing so. And so you'll find that all of the, uh, and this is just a little snapshot from, from Connect. And again, I'm sure you all are familiar with connect.uipath.com uh, for all the different ideas and things that um, are available. Um, they tend to be more business related. Um, but, you know, there's that three or 4% of me that goes, well, I'm, I'm a bit tired of doing invoice processing or bank statements or, or insurance type stuff. I want to do something a little bit more. I'm more passionate about other things uh, that, than just the, the uh, business productivity. And so I've aligned my values and my passion, and I've, I've taken RPA to a different sort of area. It may never go anywhere. I'm not expecting people to, 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 to take these ideas um, um, too seriously and implement them within business the way they are today, but they might inspire somebody to do something different with those ideas. 
And so what I've done is, and um, you know, do feel free to go to my, my, my YouTube page and you'll see I've got about 10 different little projects here that I've been doing. Um, you know, controlling um, a PowerPoint remotely from a from a smartwatch or, or, or um, uh, yeah, from, from a smartwatch um, that's connecting to orchestrator and orchestrator fires a robot, which then controls uh, and moves a PowerPoint backwards or forwards um, so I can remotely run my, my, my presentations. I'm not doing that today. I'm, I'm real and I'm using a mouse, but um, maybe I should have done. I, I should have uh, maybe run this uh, fr from my smartwatch. Um, I've also taken RPA. Um, into the warehouse and um, there's a little project I did with a barcode scanner and I can go to a pallet of goods, I can um, click uh, the 3D bar barcode scanner and that sends the inventory information to a robot, an RPA robot and that UiPath robot then um, updates the, the inventory system and it stops people having to use pen and paper um, on, 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 um, uh, within the warehouse. Um, I also had a little toy robot, and again, um, this was a, a, a Bluetooth-controlled um, robot, um, and I got a UiPath robot, uh, UiPath uh, robot via Bluetooth to actually control uh, the mechanical robot. Um, a little mind controller here. Um, it it uh, processes brain waves, and again, I can control a mouse to select the robots I want via mind control. Um, gesture control, I managed to use um, the J-Robot um, JavaScript um, uh, modules um, to be able to use finger control to move my mouse rather than uh, physically holding the mouse. Um, and then I've got my drone control, uh, which performs a stop take and, and can read items on a shelf. And uh, if the shelf needs replenishing, um, it will then send a message to an RPA robot, which will then update the order system to, uh, to, to get more of those items that are missing. So again, my core values, um, I sort of apply within my work as much as possible um, to, to help me with my creativity. Now, some of these ideas may become, you know, um, production strength and somebody might take them on and, and do something really interesting with them. But I'm happy to leave them at this space because I kind of fulfilled um, the things I wanted to do. And I learned a lot from this and enjoyed and have had, had fun building these. So what I'd like to show you, um, again, if we've got time, um, I've almost um, finished now, but um, I'll just show you my little drone field survey drone. What you'll see is a drone flying to a predetermined GPS location. There is a video feed that my RPA robots are capturing on my desktop. So it's even though there's a video stream, it's actually taking separate um, screen images from that stream, uh, passing it to a Python object recognition um, module. Um, and that will then um, read not only OCR, the location temperature, but also identify the object um, using machine learning. And then the robot will create a Word document uh, and report what findings it, it sees in that video stream that the, vid, uh, that the uh, drone has been capturing. So I'm just going to play that for you now. Um, I'll just... Uh, I'm hoping you're able to see the video. I won't walk through it, I'm kind of there. There's a little bit of reading to do with the video in the book.
I'll just stop there because of time uh, going a little bit over. But as you can see, what I've done is put together a, a number of different elements. Um, what you saw there was totally just the UiPath robots controlling the drone, taking image shots from the live stream, doing OCR recognition, doing object recognition, and creating a document um, to, to actually show what it had found, the temperature readings, um, and, um, and uh, obviously it, it even recognized, it didn't recognize a zombie, um, but it did recognize a person with a, a tennis racket. And for the really keen observers for you, it did actually fail on the suitcase. The object recognition thought it was a TV, um, not, 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 a, um, uh, not, not a suitcase, but look, with a little bit more training, we, we'll, we'll get it to, uh, to, to identify the suitcase. Um, I'm just gonna finish off very, very quickly now um, on, on, on how to do um, uh, something new with UiPath and machine learning and how to identify a new area. So going back to chunk maps, what does machine learning do? What I've done is chunked up and got these high level views of what Python can do or machine learning can do. We can then build a list of where can machine learning be applied and we can put the two lists together and obviously you can create bigger lists than this. And then what we can do is put together some um, areas of, of topic or, or users. And then what we can do is just randomly put together the different ones together. So doctor, recommendations, mass customization of users environment, for example. Um, or another one might be a leisure, um, a leisure life, leisure activities with video surveillance and ability to visually identify objects. By randomly putting these together, it gives us a challenge. And so one of the challenges could be with those three, the ability to uh, visualize things with video surveillance in to do with leisure. Um, what would be a specific example? Well, how about monitoring queues at a leisure complex? And when the queues get too busy, an SMS um, queuing mechanism is, is, is run by RPA robots. So what would that mean for the business? It means we would reduce the need for people to wait a long time in a queue and what would they be doing while they're waiting for their SMS to invite them to come to the ride? They'll be spending more money on food and, and other things. So again, you know, here's one idea of taking some random ideas, putting them together and creating a, a, a solution uh, with UiPath um, that might be a little bit unique. And of course, can, can UiPath support this? Absolutely. There are plenty of machine learning models out there for free that you can download. Add that to Twilio for your SMS messaging. Add that to UiPath robots and you've got yourself a solution. And that shouldn't take too long from a concept point of view to put together. And of course, it's not just the leisure queuing uh, solution that it would be applied to, but it could go for shops, it could go for concerts, sports and healthcare. You can repurpose those ideas. So I'm passing that back to you now. Um, thank you for listening. I'm sorry I've gone over time, um, but I leave it now in your hands as to what you will invent and what you're going to do for the rest of the weekend and those crazy ideas that you're going to come up with. Um, so again, apologies for going over time. Um, I, I hope um, everything came across OK. And uh, thank you for uh, thank, thank you for inviting me to uh, to this session today. Thank you, Tony. It was really wonderful. Uh, hearing out the journey but what i personally feel is uh, it's all about a perspective you you help us understand uh, where we we can we do think this way but we have to take this perspective in our mind and then start thinking and doing it well really like the chunk map idea and doing the double click and then looking at what is in it and then again doing a double click what is in it Mm. Well, that's that's really making me feel through on that, that how do I work on my day-to-day -day activity? And when I'm responding to an email, I always look for it that, hey, what is in it for me? Somebody need an information from me, but what is in it for me? And then I try to do something, but I was never aware of what there's a, there's a scientific way to do it. I will do a lot of research on it. I read through with this, and then I will prepare my plan how to implement or adopt this. But uh, I now invite everybody uh, to unmute yourself. We have just enabled unmute. Everybody can unmute and ask their own question, which they have, or if they have find something very interesting from Tony's presentation, which they really want to um, check on it, or you have a question on it, feel free to unmute yourself. Hi, Kumar. Yeah, hi, son. How are you? You guys are good. Hello. Go ahead with your question.
Hi Udit. Hi Tony. This is Harika. Hello. Hi Harika. Yeah, Tony. I really like the session so much. The way you have, uh, you know, put up all the creation, how they have come across, like uh, the ideas which you have given, like you know, all the things. Like I can tell, like chunk maps, design thinking, break down the complex ones, all these things. Um, I feel these are really important to understand. Like you know, we have different thoughts, but you, we will just uh, like I, if I talk personally about me, I just get stuck at some point. But these really help in order to you know put a way across to reach the uh, plan. And I also really liked one point where you have mentioned to balance the core values. That was really really amazing because uh, uh, some point of time we feel so stressed out if we uh, forget the core values. So that also really amazing. I really, really like the session. Thank you so much for being here. No, th th thank you for your feedback. And, um, you know, some of the things I've talked about, you know, we all know probably already and we often forget. And sometimes it's just good to take a step back and go, ah, yes, I'm going to bring those tools back to my daily life because I've forgotten about them. And mm -hmm. uh, it can really help with brain freeze and to, and to get your creative juices going again. Thank you. Well, we have a lot of appreciation coming, Tony, your way from the chat box. If you would like to just thank someone or look at the chat box also. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> and I love the fact, Tony, that, you know, the core values that you discussed, your five core values, you showed everything in your presentation, whether it's a creativity, challenge, achievement, humor, everything was there. Thank, thank you. And, and please do try and align to your passions and your own core values because uh, it makes life so much easier and enjoyable. And uh, it, it does reduce the stress and, and anxiety when you're working on something to know when you're working on something that is, is meaningful for you. So um, yeah, good, good, good luck everyone with, um, with, with, with matching your passions with your job and, and being able to, you know, often we don't always have a job we enjoy, but we can find ways to make certain elements of it enjoyable. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Tony or for anyone else? Even if you have some questions, which is apart from the session, which is uh, UiPath solution slash product related, feel free to ask. Do we have the right people on the call who can answer those? Okay, looks like Tony, people are so overwhelmed at this point of the time, they do not have any other questions for us. <laughs> No, no worries, and I'm happy to uh, share the, the slides with you uh, a little bit later. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, feel free to um, pick up some of those those topics and ideas and um, revisit them uh, a little bit later. Yeah. yeah. We will upload the presentation uh, on the same portal where the registration page was, and the recording will also be available for everyone. Yeah, I will also recommend everyone that, you know, whenever you get the recording, please share with your colleagues who are not able to join this session, because I really feel that this session will really help them think what they can do. Because, you know, sometime when we do some of the hackathon, for example, a lot of people say, hey, how we can think of the different ideas. And I'm sure this session is going to motivate them and think, you know, out of the box. Cool. Okay, with this, we're more... Uh... We yeah. recording and uh, yes thank you so much tony and, and udit and everyone for joining that too on saturday so and really happy tony that you, you could you know join us that's great and uh, look good good luck with coronavirus i know it's affecting everybody and it's changing our way of life and family and work and um hang in there and uh, you know hopefully we, we we might get to meet face to face one day in the future yeah thank you tony thanks everyone have a safe fun. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.